A. Uh, I would like to thank the APS POS for inviting me to join this program. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the management of the RD related straw business. And uh, I have no financial interest or relationship to disclose. I think the transient strabismus following retinal detachment surgery occurs up to 50 to 60% of patients, but most of them will resolve within several months. Only 5% of patients will experience persistent diplopia after three months. And the preoperative examination is really important. That can uh, include the slit lamp that can check the buckle position and also the uh, range of motion and uh, Force touching test can help us to check the severity and also the field of restriction. And the imaging test can help to check the buckle position. We have several buckle materials here. And uh, you can see that there is a solid silicone rubber band or tire and also porous silicone sponge and also hydrogel. Hydrogel is a hydrophilic copolymers. It was used as an explant from 1981 to 1996. And uh, as you can see on your left hand side, uh, there is a hydrogel that's the, with the co commercial name of the Mira gel. And in the middle, that's the porous silicone sponge, 505 or 507. On your right hand side, that's the solid silicone band, 240, and the silicone tire, 276. Image study can help to detect different buckle materials. On your left hand side, you can see that the hydrogel is hypo intense on T1 weighted image, and that will be hyper intense on the T2 weighted image. And it would be iso intense on the CT scan. And in the middle part, that's the silicone sponge. You can see that would be hypo intense over here on the CT scan. And the silicone tire or silicone band would be hyper intense on, silicone, on the CT scan. And uh, whether to remove the buckle is still controversial. And there are several studies published. In 2013, there's a study from the Emory Eye Center and they will have 18 patients and they report uh, the success rate would be 62.5% with buckle removal. However, the success rate will drop to 10% only without buckle removal. Another study at the Julian Stan Eye Institute, they have 25 patients. They report an overall success rate for about 72%. And they conclude that removing the scale buckle did not improve the outcome. What would be the effect of the buckle on the strabismus? I think first of all, uh, the first kind of effect is that uh, like a hydrogel, it will, with the time pass, it will swelling up with hydration and it will cause a mechanical mass effect. If that was located in the inferior part, that will shift the up, eyeball upward and cause a limitation of infraduction. And also, uh, if, if you are in, implanting an explant onto the eyeball, it may cause disturbing of the surrounding soft tissue and that may cause an adhesion effect. If that adhesion was located in downward, then they will drag the eyeball a little bit downward and cause a limitation of superduction. And the third condition is that with the time pass, they will develop some kind of the uh, fibrous capsule around these buccal materials. And uh, this fibrous capsule will also include the extracral muscle and it will cause adhesion of the extracral muscle to the underlying sclera at both at the anterior or posterior margin of the buckle. That will cause a faden effect of the extractor muscles. Let's look at the case one. That would be a 52 year old male patient and he had received buckle in the left eye 18 years ago. You can see that here is the buckle material over here and it was located inferior to the left eye and it's welding up. So that would be a hydrogel buckle and uh, there would be a over 30 present diopter of left hypertropia with severe limitation of infraduction in this left eye. So we decided to remove the explant 
And uh, here is the picture four months after the operation. You can see uh, he is osophoric in primary position and uh, the infrastructure improved a lot as compared with the pre-operative pictures on your right hand side. And uh, so the long-term completion of the hydrogel will be the hydration of the buckle with erosion or extrusion of the explant and it can migrate anteriorly and cause a optical mass effect. And uh, with the time pass, it will become extremely friable and fragment easily when you are trying to remove it. Let's look at, uh, this is uh, a case of the hydrogel. We are trying to open the fibrous capsule around the buckle. And here is the superior test muscle we are tracking. And, uh, and uh, we will open the capsule and uh, remove the hydrogel buckle with a muscle hook piece by piece. And uh, must be very careful not to damage the underlying tissues over there. So it will be very friable. In the past time, there is a literature uh, reporting that you can use a cryoprobe to extract the, uh, the hydrogel buckle in one piece. Uh, personally, I don't have that kind of experience. I usually will take, take out this uh, hydrogel buckle piece by piece and carefully. And uh, uh, in the end, uh, th this will be the lateral side, another side of the superior test muscle and uh, try to remove the, uh, make a opening of the fibrous capsule first and try to remove the uh, residual hydrogel buckle. At the end of surgery, I will usually use some uh, BSS to irrigate this uh, fibrous capsule and to flush out all the residual explant. Okay, case two is a 84, year, uh, 48 year old male patient and he had received the buccal surgery in the right eye. From the CDLM, you can see the buccal was located in the inferior temporal region and it caused a adhesion effect. So the right eye is hypotropic to the left eye and he had, had a limitation of uh, superduction in the right eye. So the, there will be about 20% of the right hypertropia and also some isotropia in the right eye. And at first, we decide to remove the explant first. And however, three months after the operation, you can see that there is not much effect. The, the eye is still hypertropic in the right eye and also isotropic. And uh, there's still limitation of superduction after the operation. So we have to go on for the second stage of operation. That would be the recession of the medial rectus muscle and also recession of the uh, inferior rectus muscle. And uh, that would be the picture of two years after the second operation. You can see he is phosphoric in primary position. And uh, the, however, there is still some mild limitation of superduction in the right eye. So uh, where the, in most cases of the uh, silicone buckle, removing the silicone buckle did not improve the surgical outcome. However, if there is a severe restriction associated with an enlarged buckle, such as a, a hydrogel buckle, it would be better to remove it before other strabismus procedures. And uh, on the other hand, we should emphasize the risk of the RD recurrence uh, if the buckle is done less than two years. The, for the surgical tip for the buckle related strabismus, first we need to care for dissection and re relieve the scar tissue or adhesion between the muscle and the underlying tissue. And it is important to avoid injury to the muscle. And sometimes it will be necessary to expose the buckle to free up the muscle. And even sometimes you need to remove part of the buckle to free up. So for resection, the muscle is attached to the insertion site. For the scission surgery, the muscle was suspended over the buckle with handbag or adjustable suture. And sometimes uh, even suture directly onto the buckle. And the force structure testing at the conclusion of the operation is important to examine if there is still some residual restrictions. Uh, here is a case of another patient and he she has re already received removal of the uh, silicone sponge. And we now are trying to res recess the lateralitis muscle. First, we will make a, a cut to relieve the restriction along superior and the inferior margin of the, uh, of the uh, lateralitis muscle. Then we try to detach the, the superior rectus muscle, uh, lateral rectus muscle. So we make a uh, suture on the 
muscle and then detach it. And then we, you, as you can see that we, we, will, we have found a severe adhesion between the extractor muscle and the, the underlying sclera tissue just behind the, the posterior margin of the sponge, uh, silicon sponge. So we need to dissect very carefully to remove the adhesion between the muscle and the underlying sclera so that we can recess the, the lateralitis muscle afterwards. So we must be very careful not to damage the muscle. So in summary, uh, the need to remove the scare buckle is still controversial. In most cases, the silicone buckle sh could be left in place, but the hydrogel buckle is suggested to be removed. And we need to do the careful dissection and relieving the scar tissue or adhesion between muscle and the underlying tissue. And we should try to avoid the muscle avoid the injury to the muscle and uh, it will be sometimes it will be necessary to e expose or even remove part of the buckle to free up the muscle and the force suction at the conclusion of the operation is very important thank you for your attention <laughs>